Hello and welcome to GG Weekend Watch with me, Rob Plumbridge, this week, filling in for Kate. Have no fear, because she will be back in next week's episode. However, I am joined by our regular top tips to panel of Andrew Mount and the return of Mr. Daryl Carter. We have eight live races this week. It's Fighting Fifth Hurdle Weekend up at Newcastle and Coral Gold Cup from Newbury. Also, fingers crossed, this week we actually get the return of Constitution Hill. And fingers crossed, we just in general have a few less non-runners. And speaking of last week, despite all the uh, non-runner chaos, we did manage to find some place money and the odd winner. Uh, Run for Oscar, 11-2, was placed and tipped by Kate. Botox Hass won the stayers for Andrew at 17-2. In the same race, Holston, 33-1, placed fourth, tipped by myself. And Rapper, 14-1 placed and tipped by Andrew. Um, so without any further ado, let's get stuck into our opener. It's the 120 at Newbury. It's the Sir Peter O'Sullivan Memorial Handicap Chase. And let's welcome back and say hello for the first time to Mr. Daryl Carter. Daryl, how are you doing, mate? Yes, very well, thank you. Thank you. Um, how are you? You all right? We're, we're, we're all right, apart from hoping to see if a little bit better action this week than we did last week. Um, <laughs> don't know what yeah. you made of all that. Yeah, it was dire, wasn't it? Uh, it's just typical, isn't it? Um, they need to change the program, but that's another show. Uh, my nap goes in here straight away, so kicking straight oh, away with a nap, okay. if you don't mind. <laughs> um, that horse is Zanza. Oh, uh, no! That's my pick. Absolute stone-cold <laughs> nap this is. I, I really, really fancy this today. I thought the run at Weatherby in the first time, Blinkers last time behind Carl Philippe, was a real step back in the right direction. The, the way he finished from three out to the finish... I, I genuinely, if you've not seen it, go back and watch it because he's flying home and it really looked like the old Zanza from last year. Um, the Blinkers hopefully will do the trick a second time. The return to Newbury is a huge positive in his, his favour. He's only been beaten once here and that was when sixth in a Betfair hurdle only beaten two lengths. Third time out seems to be the time to catch him. He's won for the last two years. There, oh, he, he won two years ago, third time out. He was second in the racing post gold cup to two lengths to call Cody. Third time out last year. The year before, I think he won third time out or two years before that. The drying ground, I don't think will be an issue for him. I think the step up in trips in his favour. Um, and this horse is destined for a huge part. I mean, he's something like 11 pounds lower than that. Racing Post Gold yeah. Cup second at Cheltenham. I think he's got a massive chance. Newbury's going to be the place to catch him. Double figure price, four places. It's got to be, got to be a nap to kick us off, Rob. Got to be. Lovely. You don't want a second pick, then? No, no. <laughs> not even interested in anything else in the race. Love just Danza. Well, twelve to one nap to start us off. That's that's a that's a hell of a start, Andrew. Are you are you in agreement? Yeah, I've napped Zanza in Racing Football Outlook this week. Uh, I'm napping Zanza uh, in this video today. I mean, he was the most, he was the worst campaign horse in national in history last season. He, he hates Cheltenham. Uh, you look at his record at that track, pulled up six, um, not in the first nine, fell, pulled up six, second, pulled up, pulled up. And yet, frustratingly, he was campaigned in all those good two and a half mile handicap chases last year. Uh, connections look to finally have cottoned on. They gave him a pipe opener over hurdles at Market Raisin, and, and then because he uh, he came to form with that eleven to one second at uh, Weatherby last time out, the flat track was in his favour. As as Daryl said, his newbie record is first, first, six, and first. Um, you know, with a defeat by two lengths at twenty five to one, he lost a shoe that day as well. And I mean, I, I was I, last season. I thought he'd have a good chance in the Hennessy Labrooks Coral Trophy Cup handicap, whatever we call it nowadays, but. Uh, I mean, this two miles, six and a half furlong trip will be fine. Track will be fine. I couldn't. I mean, he was 14 to one when I put him up on Tuesday. And I'm thinking, well, he was also entered uh, here at Newbury on Friday. So I thought, well, you know, I'll wait and see what uh, see what happens. And he's still 12 to one now. You know, he's definitely running. So everything is right for Zanza. Should run a everything. big race. Everything. Wow. Everything, Rob. Oh, <laughs> love it. Well, I'm not even don't need to put up a selection there. Zanzar wins the opener. You've heard it here first. 12 to 1, get on when you can. Um, and we travel next up north to Newcastle for the 135. It's the Betfair Daily Rewards. Novices handicap steeple chase. Um, we'll go back to you, Andrew. Yeah, interesting race this one because the three at the head of the market, Shantu Lucky, Lord Rocco, uh, uh, Malinello, um, all of Actually, no, they've changed. Sorry, um, Shantu, Lord Rockwood, son of the song. 
Um, they all look as if they need big fields and strong paces. You look at their wins, they all seem to have come in sort of fields of 13 or more runners and uh, yeah, they like to be held up. So I just thought it was possible that something could nick this on the front end. It's a horrible little filthy race. Um, but Tim Reed's got one called Big Difference that I thought had a squeak. And he does seem to be the only one who likes to go from the front. So uh, yeah, it's one of these ones where you think anything could happen. If, if I was doing a place spot, I'd stick all five in. Hope there's a late non-runner and um, you know the seven to one outsider are four wins and uh, everyone else gets uh, chucked out of the bet pretty much so uh, yeah um big difference to uh, hopefully uh, get a soft lead and cause a bit of an upset but it's a uh, yeah funny race yeah it is a funny race now outsider of the five for andrew daryl uh did you, did you feel any differently yeah like lord rocco um i think this is a this is a progressive horse and uh, i thought it was a really good chase debut at air last time i loved the way he jumped he was gaining so much ground at his fences and just being reined back and held on to if you like uh i thought he should have won but for a mistake at the final flight and then he was just outpaced between the back of the last and the line and he steps up to three miles today and returns to newcastle where he was a really dominant maiden hurdle winner uh in a field of 13 as andrew mentioned clocked a really good time figure that day uh i think there's plenty more to come from this horse the train's got a 21 percent strike rate over fences here uh and yeah i think he's got to go very very close i didn't think but I, I like that malinello of ben paulins but he's been off a long long time mm -hmm. uh it might just come on for the run but uh i think he's got a good chance i think four to one's a very fair price as well i expect him to be favorite to be honest lovely stuff confident Daryl carter this afternoon like it like it a lot wow, we've had all this we've had all this crap racing during the week it's nice yeah yeah it's yeah a little bit half decent now's the time to get stuck in i like it um which which moves us back down to newbury uh this is the 155 it's the coral racing club handicap hurdle race and uh let, let's swing it back to you daryl uh yeah i've got i've got two in here if that's all right i'm gonna put two yeah. i'm gonna put both of these up on the column as well um i was quite keen to be against walking on air and west Balboa at the top of the market and perkin rose in fact that entry race that perkin rose won was a very steadily run affair it really favored those ridden prominently they sort of quickened around the bend and, and sort of left those in midfield and worse um poorly placed really and uh, I thought Petit Tonnerre, the first one of the two, I thought that horse did remarkably well to get as close as he did. Uh, he's rated 139. Like, that's really stiff for him. He's only had a couple of starts. But I think if there's a horse that's got the potential to be a graded horse in this race, then it's definitely him. Uh, I expect him to come on a good bit for that run. He loomed up quite menacingly. And then, uh, but he had just given first run, like I say, to, to, to those ahead of him. And he just couldn't pick him up. And I thought he lacked a bit of fitness that day as well. It looked like he just blew up a little bit towards the finish um i think he's uh he's a nice horse to keep on side he's only a four-year-old couple of starts it'd be silly not to think he's gonna rate much higher than this going forward so he's the first one at 12 to 1 lord battersley's the other one um i like this horse just when he comes to to newbury uh, i think he, he i think this is a, a real horses for courses type of character he, he likes plumpton he likes newbury but I thought the Chepstow run on seasonal return, that form has worked out really well. He's beaten two lengths by Napper's Hill there. Again, he just shaped like he was going to come on for the run, and he did at Plumpton, won very, very easily over Ryomi Uni, who's uh, no mug himself. Uh, and he, he put that to bed really readily. I think there's plenty more to come from him. He was an excellent fourth in the Betfair hurdle, beating just three lengths here back in February, and that race has worked out remarkably well. A mark of 133 with conditions to suit, I think he's he's a bit better than that. So uh, those would be my two against the field. Two against the field for you. And w will you wait to decide if they're each way or are you just going to play them straight? Uh, well, I, I was thinking about pl playing p a Petit Tonnerre each way, uh, Lord Baddersley win only. Uh, the reason being is Petit Tonnerre, I just can't see how this... I think, he, I think he might turn into a stayer and I just can't see how he's out of the, out of the four um i think you get full place in it and uh, lord baddersley he has got the uh potential to throw in a poor poor effort and and a poor jump as well so it's kind of going to be all or nothing for for lord baddersley perhaps each way for petite on there okay well you can always find out in uh they're going up in daryl's column and uh let's move to andrew what do you do you agree yeah no strong opinion um in this race i wasn't um sort of massively keen on um one of the uh, shorter price ones walking on air the Henderson horse just because of the way he jumped last time out and uh, yeah, he just seemed to have gone on the drift since the uh, the prices came out um the interesting uh, West ba Balbu is it West Balboa West Balboa was the, was the interesting one uh, <laughs> having been so impressive 
at Warwick on his, on her rules debut um, you know, this time last year, and then she only had one run subsequently. That was when second to stage uh, stage show, stage star, easy for me to say, in the cello. Uh, um, it's very hard to make the transition from maiden, maiden hurdle winner to grade grade one hurdle winner in one step. So that that was a good effort, you know, proven fresh. Could be well handicapped on one two seven. I'll um, I'll know my my colours to that one. The, the other interesting one is Imphal, although he's forty to one. It's two and a half miles, and it looks like a prep. Um, I mean, he was so unlucky to bump into the Gordon Elliott Cheaty Horse Ard Hill at uh, Ascot last year, finishing second, and. Uh, you know, since then, you know, it found uh, ne next couple of times found good to soft and soft to go into uh, too slow. Bounced back with a good second on good ground at uh, Haydock over three miles. When he stepped up to three miles, as long as the grounds on the fast side of good to soft, in fall of the winning races again this year. But I'm I'm thinking forty to one. You know, you can't have everything, can you, with that sort of price? So maybe you know, maybe the trip is on the sharp side. But I'll probably end up throwing a few quid each way at him if if the ground stays quick. Um, but yeah, West Balboa the main plate. West Balboa the main plate, I like it. And that moves us to the big race. Well, not the second big race of the day, I guess. But it's the return of Constitution Hill. And we've been promised this by Nicky Henderson, haven't we? Versus Epitant. <laughs> <laughs> we've been promised. We've been promised. Um, uh, he's, ne he's never broken a promise, has he? No, no, he wouldn't. He wouldn't do that. He wouldn't do that. But hopefully, we get to see the lineup. And um, Andrew, I'm going to swing it back to you. Are, you. are you a player in this race or a watcher? Well, I was um, earlier in the week thinking that um, he's not going to run both, is he? So I'll have to back not so sleepy each way, thinking that one of them will come out. And uh, because I I did that, and then uh, uh, not so sleepy is about twice the price now because he's supposedly <laughs> running both of them. But uh, yeah, uh, I mean. Of the two, I'd have to side with Constitution Hill, but I'm I'm looking at other ways to play this race, and you know, without the favourites and tote exactors, and uh, um, I mean, you know, not so sleepy. He's got a great record of, of the hurdles at this time of year, November, December, four wins from five completed starts. Has won this race, of you know, obviously. Um, Tommy's Oscar, I thought this was a bit of an afterthought coming back over hurdles, and and Void de Rev, I, I thought was semi interesting. I mean, he was beaten a long way. In this was it last year when he was two hundred to one. Uh, but he was well placed to finish second at um, uh, was it Aintree or Haydock last time out when Brewing Up a Storm fell, got 12 grand pretty much and finished in second. And they they ride him differently nowadays. I mean, you know, for two and stupidly he tried to make the running of this when he ran in it before. He's just going to be held up to try and pick up the pieces and try and get second or third and get a bit of prize money. So, you know, we have had mishaps in this race previously and uh, fancied horses unseating. And, uh, you know, if, if we do get a funny one, then it's not impossible that you know Voida Rev finishes third. So it's how to kind of make money out of that. You know, buy him on the spreads, or uh, you, you know, there will be a, um, a total trifecta on this race. So you know, that was the, the way I was I was looking. I thought he could outrun his odds. He's 125 to one. I probably have to put a couple of quid each way on him as well. Um, but yeah, it wasn't a race that I, I wanted to play seriously. You know, um, from a betting point of view, now that. Uh, if both of them line up, but um, yeah, I thought Void of Rev could outrun his odds. Lovely, 125 to one, Void of Rev each way, um, or playing in the exotics. Uh, Daryl, any, yeah. any any further to that? Uh, well, he's a strange horse, Void of Rev, isn't he? Because he's got a handicap mark of 133, he's only going to pick up 12 grand for finishing third here. You probably could find the handicap for him if he's good enough to finish third in this, but uh, I can see Andy's point, he's running this for the last couple of years. He, He's always an interesting one. He seems to run well in sort of conditions races rather than handicaps for some reason. Um, this is all about Constitution Hill, isn't it? God, yeah. uh, if he's if he's beaten here, I'd be absolutely shocked. The one thing I will say is that this is um, this is Epitone's track, uh, the type of track that she do, do, does does well at. Um, I said this a couple of times last season that she's the type of horse that doesn't want to get racing around a bend. She likes to get racing in a, in a home straight. She likes to be able to sit and uh, pounce in her races she shouldn't have the gears to go with constitution hill uh this is a nice long home straight very fair track i would say so there shouldn't really be no excuse for constitution hill shouldn't be no excuse for epiton um and yeah and i expect if, if those two don't pull clear here i'm sorry not so sleepy he's a 10 year old i can't be having him i thought i thought aiden gave epiton a bad ride last year when when they dead heated i thought that was poor but uh, if those two are not pulling well clear, I'd be extremely disappointed. Uh, and Constitution Hill should just be gliding clear. Yeah, hundred percent. I think one, one, one to enjoy um, on Saturday certainly. Um, 
next race up is we're the not going to tip up a treble like we did last week uh, constitution hill long press and uh, a plutard <laughs> Oh, <laughs> the least successful treble of all time oh, absolutely <laughs> shocking um well hopefully constitution hill does run and hopefully he does win and, and that can get us all really excited uh for, for the upcoming season um next race up is the 230 at newbury it's the coral bet bundles intermediate ma handicap hurdle race bit of a mouthful um Dale, daryl why do you why don't you start us off with this yeah uh this is this is quite a good race i think um quite a good race first streets obviously very much respected on that second estate man uh last year and you know he was pretty consistent throughout the year first time up just might be a time to sort of maybe avoid him i'm not sure uh 146 is pretty high but he is he is the best horse in this race a few improving rivals in here uh theater glory's not stopped improving again first time out this season nathan brennan's on to take seven off so perhaps the second choice there over first over first street with james bowen on um i'm going to take a chance on the second string horse and that's york c for gary moore the outside of the entire field yeah. um racing off a mark of 123 very lightweight in this race um thanks to first street but this is a horse that uh i thought oh yeah uh, i just thought he was desperate for them to go harder up front he was being held up for a lot of his race he was he was a little bit keen um and he was just he was just staying on at the finish they just weren't going quick enough for him and uh I, he was a bit of an eye catcher for me to be honest when i saw when i saw his opening rating uh, he went to fontwell odds on and bolted up at a maiden hurdle at the end of last season uh, or the end yeah the end of last season and i just um they they made the run in that day. I just thought that it was like let's just get him get him over the line. Let's just box tick uh, tick a box, you know, scoring as a three year old. And uh, I expect them to revert to hold up tactics today. There's loads of pace on in here, including this stable mate Teddy Blue. Uh, Theatre Glory likes to go forward. Paris on call likes to go forward. Boomborn can go forward. Um, and I just I just wonder if he's fit and well to do himself just for three hundred thirty five days. I think he just might be the best handicapped horse in the race, and he's thirty three to one. Uh, look, this could be just a, 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 a sight enough for something else, or it could just be a prep spin or, or fitness run. But I think at thirty-three to one, I think you can take a little bit of a chance. And Noel Houlihan claiming a further three off. I think he, I think he's got valid claims. Completely unexposed, goes well fresh, good grounds, fine. Um, yeah, I, I like his chances. Love it, really strong case, nicely done with uh, a thirty-three to one shot. Um, I'll before we get get to Andrew, I'm gonna. I'm going to take Picard in this. I think um, really impressed with his reappearance run. Uh, he looks he looks really like the race as well for a five year old, and he is like the race, but he's been running in much higher graded graded races than this. Um, he looks unexposed over hurdles. He's getting weight from the favourite. Um, I think he'll improve massively for the run um, first time out. Um, and yeah, I, th I think he I think he'll I think he'll go well here and get, getting plenty of weight off off that favourite. I think he's I think he's got a good chance. But um, Andrew, what what do you think? Um, I'm going to get involved in some uh, after timing here. Remember two years ago, uh, Nikki Henderson's Floressa won this, the stable second string, 10 to 1. Uh, I'll put her up on this video because she was a front runner and was the only pace of the race. And uh, this race has gone to front runners six times in the last 10 years. It's been very difficult to come from off the pace. We've got a smallish field again. You've got um, the two favourites, First Street and Pico, who, who both tend to um, come from midfield or further back. I mean, Pickles when came in the field of 14 and took a keen hold. So, you know, uh, I think I don't think this test is going to suit. Um, I was, I've been through it to see who's going to make the running or who's likely to make the running based on what they've done in their recent starts. Mm -hmm. One I came down the side of was uh, Boomborn for um, for the Skeletons. I mean, you could argue that you know being a stable mate of Pico, maybe um, you know he's in here as a pawn sacrifice to make the running. Um, but I thought I'd give him a chance. I mean, he does tend to go out to his left. His last three runs have come on right-handed tracks. The last time he ran left-handed, he, he won very easily at Foss last, making all the time before that. He won by 13 lengths at Subble, making all. So, boom, born 16 to 1 to give us a run for our money from the front. And Parisian Encore as well, uh, another potential prominent racer for the Nicky Richards yard. Interesting that this this one's coming so far south. Lovely stuff. Boom, born the, uh, the Dan Skelton second string. Yeah. Um, looking ahead now, we've got the big one at Newbury. This is the 305, uh, the Coral Gold Cup handicap, or the Hennessy for the purists. Um, hey, the Labrooks Trophy handicap shows. The, the Labrooks Winter Trophy, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Um, 
let's go let's go back to andrew andrew and this is your kind of race isn't it yeah i'm glad they haven't called it the coral bet bundles handicap chase because i'm i'm I'm, not, I'm sure bet bundles are, are something different rather than have a massive chunk on but it doesn't seem to be sending a responsible gambling message <laughs> um yeah this isn't the strongest renewal is it um and you go through it and you can start giving half chances to pretty much the entire field i mean and sam um was one that i i, I have bet anti-post um i mean he, he tends to need his first run of the season he tends to do really well in sort of december january time um, we're sort of coming up to that period and over a couple of days short when I, I laid him win in place first time out at ascot and i couldn't believe they kept backing him he was like um, tens into sevens you know finished eighth beating 21 lengths but he will improve for that it's possible that he, he wants to go right-handed. I mean, you know, he, he doesn't run this way very often, but actually the last time he did go left-handed, he won here at Newbury, albeit over hurdles. Um, so I thought Ansem was a, was a big price at 20 to 1. Uh, the other two I've backed, Fanny and Destreval, the best horse in the race, um, top weight. Now, his jumping can go to pot at times, but that tends to be on soft ground, or perhaps it's a case of just not being able, you know, not being able to jump out the soft ground, make mistakes. Um, the distance is a is an unknown. I know he's been running over sort of two and a half miles, but you know he, he does go well at Newbury, and he's unbeaten here. Um, you know, uh, and he's won very, very impressively both times. I know the first one was two miles on on his uh, British debut, but last season it was two and a half. And you know, like, like we talked about, you can't have everything when you're backing thirty three to one shots. There's going to be a doubt about the distance, the ground, the size of the field. You know, uh, first time headgear. But I thought 33 to 1 uh, about the best horse in the race was uh, given that Venetia started to hit the ground running now. Don't mention, don't mention training. Uh, honestly, uh, honestly, uh, right. <laughs> Listen, right. I can't believe you were saying all that stuff last week about Venetia. And then turns out she's had now had four winners from her last eight runners, like three mm. or four days later. It's absolutely irrelevant. It's absolutely irrelevant. Well, it, it all depends what price, though. If a trainer's had. 30 losers in a month and they were all even money then that's you know there should have been 15 winners out of that month i mean venetia's prior to last week you know she she should have had five winners and she hadn't had any um, but again you, you're looking at how they finish their races up aren't you and uh, you know uh, and what price they go off that's the most important thing the other one i've, I've said so the other one i've got the big price potterman here in the first time visor that's a positive yeah. angle for, for alan king and um yeah potterman was 50 to one i think into 40s with william hill and um you know you go back two years he was only an 11 to one shot for this race uh, he likes good ground you know uh, looks like we're going to get that um you could argue that he's better in smaller fields um but, you know his, his bet 365 gold cup win you know he was promoted from second that day he has got plenty of place for him, uh, aside from that in in big fields and you know maybe tom cannon can keep him wide and out of trouble if the first time vice has a positive impact he probably shouldn't be around about 40 to 1 but it's uh yeah it's a funny old race so i'm fanny and destreval potterman and ansan in uh probably in that order but they're, they're sort of 33s 40s and 20s at the time of recording Lovely. Three big prices, Daryl. You need any better? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm with. I've got two. I'm with Fanny and Destreval as well. Um, I think Andrew makes a strong case for that horse there. I, I, the best horse in the race under um, under optimal conditions, really, for me. I think he. I, I genuinely think he wants better ground. Um, I've fought this for for a long time. I think he he's a small horse. I think he struggles to jump out of the, out of the soft ground. Really, nothing better ground just helps him. He's got such a lovely stride on him, I, I, and you go back and watch that run at Newbury when he absolutely dotted up last year. Um, he was just gliding across that good soft ground. It was it was a pleasure to watch. I think he's I, I, I think he's been crying out to go up and trip as well. I mean, if you go back and look at his Ryanair run behind Fakir Dalderis, he was miles back. He's come steaming home. Um, I don't think stamina would be an issue for him whatsoever. Um, Charlie Deutsch is only not on because... He's gone to ride La Hombresse at uh, up in up Newcastle. Yeah. Um, Lucy Turner is a more than capable jockey, claiming a further five. I think he's got a fantastic chance. He's only a seven-year-old, um, and he loves Newbury. So thirty-three to one, he'll be for me. The other one is oh, no, never. Sorry to interrupt. Darren, another point: even if he doesn't stay, some firms are six places, five places. You can finish thirty lengths back in this race and still finish fifth and collect on the each way. Yeah, um, exactly. So... And they do tend to. I suppose my slight concern, Andrew, would be would be i'd do like a prominent racer at uh at newbury and depend on how how he'll be ridden 
would be the concern, but I'm not going to know that until the off. So I, I think, like you say, 33 to one, you can't have everything your own way. Um, so yeah, he's 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 on my short list. The other is my old mate Jericho Rock, who I tipped in the Ultima and uh, nastily got caught inside the final uh, 50 yards by Korak Rambler, who he reposes. Um, I thought that Tom Scudamore did far too much too soon, too early on Jericho Rock in that Ultimate Handicap. He was posted like wide. It was a standing start. He was posted wide. He screamed him down the outside to try and get the lead. Couldn't get the lead. Tried to settle him in midfield. Then decided that they had slowed the pace slightly. So he tried to go and get the lead again. He finally got to the lead. Then he came over to the inside. And then he made the rest of the run and was caught just in the last 50 yards. I, I, it, was, it was so frustrating because of the standing start. He had poorly positioned him if he wanted to get the lead. Uh, and it just really frustrated me. I didn't think there was anything wrong with the hurdle run at Aintree, the comeback run. I couldn't believe they put him in for fate as favourite for that. That's just goes to show how clueless they can be at times. Um, he had a big drift, just given a very easy time. This has been the target. Second start after a wind up. He is definitely well handicapped. His last run here, he chased home St. Palais, who um, went on to go and be 20 pounds higher in the handicap. So we know he handles the course. I think he'll be ridden prominently. The ground, I suppose, the drying ground might just be a little bit of a concern, but um, I, I, I do think he's got a fantastic chance. Other than that, his form stacks up really well from last season. He's a six-year-old. He's improving. He's going to get tons of weight thanks to some big weights in here. Uh, he's off the right mark for me. I think he's got to go close. He's got to go, and he's got to go close, surely. Oh, two big shouts, Daryl. Have, have you picked these sources based on how hard they are to say? Because I was about to read them. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to give it a go. Um, I'm I'm going to give a shout here it's, it, to uh, Lord, Accord, Lord Accord. I, I was really impressed um, by his Badger Beers run. Obviously, ran into Frodo. No harm getting beat by him. Um, Ed of the Handicapper. I think there's loads to like about his chances. Clearly informed. Clearly going to go well. Um, and he will do for me. Which takes us to our penultimate race. This is the Betfair Exchange Rehearsal Handicap Steeplechase. This is the one twenty uh, three twenty five even at Newcastle. Um, Larm Press will line up in this. All all things being well, um, Daryl, can you uh, can you see him being beat? No, no, absolutely yeah. no, no. I don't. I don't care about the weight he's got to give away. I, I don't re really care. I don't care. It's first time out. Um, he's by far a class above these these rivals. Uh, into overdrive's progressive. Happy go lucky. He's a horse I fancy for Cheltenham last week. Was pulled out because of the ground. Apparently, he's done a really good piece of work. Uh, he would he would be the one I'd have to follow long, uh, long press home. But I mean, I I just think he's by far be by far better than these. Um, I think Newcastle will suit him well. A yeah. uh, little bit of dig in the ground. I, sh I should expect with the with the horses they've got going up to Newcastle, they're going to be watering like mad um, to keep that keep soft in the going description. And uh, I think he'll take a whole world of beating. I don't care it's first time out. I think just think he, I'm hoping that he's going to go from the front as well because I just think his higher cruising speed they just won't be able to live with him. Yeah. I don't want to see him sort of buried, you know, buried away in midfield and then trying to make a run. That that would that would very much disappoint me. I think go and make the running on him. It'd take a world of beating in this. Could not agree more, and I'll um I'll add to that. He'll, he'll be my selection. He's actually got a good record fresh as well. Um, yeah. So I'll further add. It, it just I just said it just because the comment of the um the owner the other day when he said uh, uh he's going to come on for the run, but I just well, just don't listen to that rubbish and just yeah yeah yeah. You know? Best best horse wins. Andrew, have you got um have you got an ulterior? Yeah, I mean it's it's good to see Lompress uh, going left handed again. You know we know he jumps out to his left on right handed tracks and. Uh, um, you know, I, I thought if you, you know, there's half, half a chance you might, um, you know, sort of do something silly at Ascot if he reappeared there. So, uh, you know, this track's going to suit and uh, you wouldn't imagine it's going to be that quick. And you know, he's probably just going to go from the front and be very, very difficult to pass. I thought Dingo Dollar, you know, might, if it is quicker than good to soft or, you know, no worse than good to soft at least, then he won the veterans chase at uh, Aintree last time out in a big field and, I love Sandy Thompson runners in the winter. Just back them all sort of November through to February. You make a big profit over the years, particularly at this track. And since he's joined him from Alan King, he's rarely run a bad race, you know, when he's had sort of good to soft or quicker going. I mean, he was just touched off in last year's um, um, Scottish National, which is his main target again this season. But they said, you know, he's a 10-year-old. They're not going to sort of like lay him out for races and 
you know, handicap, you know, and like, you know, try and get a handicap. They're just going to like, you know, try and run and win as many races as they can because, you know, age is not on his side. So, uh, you know, they'll just keep going with him. So, you know, if you, if you want to back one each way against the favourite, we'll have a forecast, maybe Dingo Dollar to chase home Long Presse. Lovely stuff. Lovely stuff. So um, that takes us on to our final race now, which is the 340 at Newbury. This is the Coral Get Closer to the Action Handicap Steeplechase. Um, Daryl, you, you take us this in the, in the final race of the day. Yeah, I, I didn't really have a strong opinion on this race, to be to be quite honest with you. I thought Claire Dane was interested first start after a wind up. I do like I do like the angle of backing Dan Skelton horses like they're better horses after a long break. Uh, they seem to be ready sort of first time up a lot of the time. Um, and I suspect that this will be the case with Claire Dane. But I, I didn't really have a strong opinion. I couldn't really uh, split a lot of these runners. Hatch is a horse I really like. He's the outside of the field here. But this horse was travelling extremely well at air when we last saw him. Um, and and I, I tipped him that day at like 16 to I'm pretty sure he would have won that race if he, if he didn't tip up. Um, it's been a long time since we've seen him now, but um, I, I just haven't got a strong opinion. I do like Amarillo Sky. I, again, though, I think this might be a good bit of placing by Joe Tizard as opposed to this horse being, you know, I think he, I think there's limitations to what this horse can achieve. Um, and, and at mark of 144, you're sort of there or thereabouts. But if there's anything to take him on with, I don't know. Um, I, I can't get involved, really. <laughs> can't get involved. That's fair enough. Andrew, any, anything stronger? Yeah, I think Amarillo Sky will win. I was going to put him up as a bet with five to two. Then he's two to one. Now he's six to four, 13 to eight. So I probably won't bother at that sort of price. But I mean, some people have got him down as a soft ground horse, which is plain wrong. He, he's just a small field merchant. And um, you know, when he has um, single figure lineups below grade one companies, very, very difficult to beat indeed. And uh, he's got the running style that's perfect for Newbury i.e. he goes from the front. I mean, there are one or two others that are sort of lurking. Again, I mean, only money. Uh, I couldn't believe they wanted to back him at um, entry last uh, last time in the ground gate when against him. He's a proper good ground horse. It was soft that day. And, I mean, I, I kept laying him, kept laying him. They kept backing him. He was third in the end at 11 to 4. Um, provided it is decent ground, he should go well. Bundor and uh, the old boy, 11-year-old, he, he's one I sort of put up each way a couple of times in the early parts of last season. He does well early season, got a great record sort of November, December time. You know, he could, you know, get second or third and out, you know, below his age. And, and Monsieur Lecoq, Jane Williams' runners are, are very interesting at the moment. Um, so when I spoke to her at Warwick uh, a few weeks ago, she said they're all about six weeks behind where she wanted them to be. Um, mm. I set up a system in my database then to sort of flag up any Jane Williams horse after a recent run. You know, the first 13 of them got beat and then she had sort of four out of five and, you know, at big prices. You know, the one that was beaten finished third. So uh, Monsieur Lecoq, um, you know, didn't get very far 28 days ago, but uh, you know, he's another one that could be involved. So I started off thinking, yeah, I'll put up Amarillo Sky, I'll bet this at five to two, and then it's now six to four. And the more you look at it, I think there are a few others sort of lurking in there. So, you know, I'll, I'll put Amarillo Sky up for the purpose of this video, but in terms of a bet, I don't think I'll have one. Right, no bet for Andrew. There you go. So trainers beware if you're having a conversation with Andrew Mount. There will be an Excel spreadsheet going up straight after. Is that how it works? Yeah. Um, so to finish us off, um, we have any other selections. Now, we didn't have any last week because Daryl wasn't on the video. So, Daryl, please tell me you've got so many other selections. No, I actually haven't this week. Uh, just just to say, though, that uh, keep an eye on the 12 o'clock at Gorham Park. This is a good beginner's chase over there. Classic getaway journey with me. Manila Kakuna last year's runner-up in the Albert Bartlett. It's going to be a, a informative race. Um, but I haven't got anything from anywhere else, unfortunately, mate. Oh, oh Andrew. Uh, anything from anywhere else? Yeah, I think I've... Um, what is it? Lord Sparky, who's been running well at Huntingdon despite jumping out to his left he, he, he won there a couple of um, runs ago since then it's all been a case of um, you know um, sort of lost so much ground by that going left tendency that he's got chinned and uh, he goes left-handed at Doncaster 12.05 so I'm, I'm on four to Cerisi at uh, Lingfield in the in the uh, trifecta to finish oh, exactly one, won, won to finish exactly second or third he is leading approach in the last and he's just got to uh, He's just got tuned, thank goodness. So yeah, um, yeah, have a look at Lord Sparky at um, Doncaster, uh, but that was a, that was about it, really. Well, as ever, check out Daryl and Andrew's columns. I think is the is the main takeaway from that. You'll be able to catch them free on gg.co.uk. Um, 
and all that's left now is for to get the lads naps now Darryl, Zanza! no that's mine <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then, so i'll tell you what rob should we should we do nap and next best uh, uh, all right good idea yes no problem yeah um, yeah so let's have you nap and your and your mb zanza and zanza <laughs> oh, i can't believe it. easy i was gonna do that as well so zanza and have another bird. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go um Zanza and uh let's go uh let's go petite tonnier each way in the 155 at New okay. Love it. Um Andrew. Yeah, I'll go nap Zanza and uh, next best. I think I'll, I've not seen the prices yet, but Lord Sparky at Doncaster going left hand is gonna bring improvement. Lovely stuff. I mean, I haven't tipped Zanza, but even I want to nap it now. Uh, <laughs> I I will go with nap Lord Accord, but the, the next best has to be Lauren for us. So I think that, that just wins, even though as mu as muggy as that is. Um, what what, what I'll, price would you make that, lads? What price would you make that? He's six to four. That's more than fair, isn't it? I think so. so. Who's that? L uh, Lon Press, six to four. That's more than fair, isn't it? Very fair. I, th I was expecting to be odds on, personally. But Andrew, you're the odds man, no? Um, I've not looked at the race in sufficient detail to sort of say six to four is, you know, 25% over the odds or under the odds or whatever. So, uh, it, but yeah, but it, 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 will he start shorter than six to four on the yeah. day? Yeah. I, I, if, if you ask, if, if you said you asked me to say yes or no, I'd say yes, he will. I agree. I agree. And he just, and I think he just wins. I think we can all agree on that. So on that note, all that is left now is to thank both Andrew and Daryl for all their hard work this week. Thanks to you for watching. Best of luck with all your bets this weekend, and we'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>